Queen Buzz, and today is Behind the Buzz with DJ Nikki Sevilla. Behind the Buzz is the unedited, the raw, the real nature of what's going on. And as we all know in the music industry, it is not as what it's parked up to be. So it's time to get vulnerable. It's time to get behind the scenes and see things. wake up and say, I'm going to DJ, and and more so, what is DJ? Because it's a totally different world today. I, I actually had a dream. I really got my head. had a dream. I was 13. Uh, I had no clue what a DJ was, uh, but I heard some kid talking about it in school, so I guess I had the dream that night. I, I pictured what I thought a DJ was, so I woke up that morning. It was around my birthday. I said, my dad said, what do you want for your birthday? I said, I want to be a DJ. What is that? I don't know, I want turntables. So he got me turntables in the mixer. And that was it. I just There was nobody to teach me. I mean, you're talking, I'm doing this over 20 years. So it wasn't like it is now. There was no YouTube. There was no every DJ on every corner that everybody knew somebody. It wasn't like that. I, I didn't even know a DJ. Just heard some kid talk about it, but didn't know anybody. So I just taught myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, I started on records. Most uh, DJs, you know, we used records back then, turntables. Um, which was a lot harder. They didn't mix for you. You had to learn actually how to beat match. And without, without actually learning what beat, ma beat match, I learned from listening uh, KTU, the DJs on the radio. I would listen to their mixes and I'm, I used to wonder like, how they were matching it. And then once I learned how to match them, I taught myself by using two of the same record. Because I figured if I, can, if I knew how the song was supposed to sound, I could match them. So I used two of the same record, matched them up. But then I would, my mixes weren't as smooth as theirs. So I'm like, well, what are they doing different? And then I started realizing about counts, eight counts and 16 counts, and that you have to mix on count to, so that when one song's going out, the vocal's coming in or the drop is coming in. Again, yeah. Well, you're sitting here all calm and collective, and you obviously have yourself. Well, I should be nervous. You're supposed to make well, nervous. No, no. Have... You know, you have everything planned out. It seems like everything's pretty solidified. But, you know, we speak of amateurs, and I don't like how that word has been turned into, like, such a negative Way. Like way, yeah, yeah because I believe that you're starting off in the industry, that's your title, you know, you can't just jump to being a professional. So, behind the buzz, we really get in and want to know behind the scenes. Okay. So, let's talk about your first time as a DJ. First time. Well, <laughs> first of all, I, I mixed in my basement for years before I even, you know, I started at 13. Neon lights. I, I'm, I'm like, uh, you know, I'm, uh, when it comes to equipment, I'm a tech head, you know, okay. I'm, I'm not Mr. like computer, a new app here, you know, not to mention the word app. Um, when it comes to equipment, I, I do sound light, I do all that stuff, so I'm like really into that. I, I probably mixed down there for four years before I even did my first, uh, I did my first party. Okay. Which I wasn't really nervous at. I mean, it was like a school dance. I was uh, 16. Uh, my mom drove me in her Cadillac <laughs> to the event with my equipment in the back. <laughs> So, like I said, that was it. The first club I did, I was 17. And, yeah, that was, I, I was good. I was a good mixer. I could mix. I, I had all my music. I had everything, all my records in, in, in order. But we used to be, um, put them in order of, uh, of beats per minute. Yep, got to the club, got in that booth. Could not match a beat. I'm like, what? What is wrong here? What is going on? Was it their setup or was it? It was that, you know, in a club, there's, they, uh, back then they didn't, have, they didn't use monitors. Like, you used to have to be able to train your ear to hear the delays. I didn't know how to do it yet. And I'm talking, um, it was horrendous. They, it was a team that the kids sat on the dance floor. They sat down. No! So I I'm surprised I even kept doing this after that. You were 17? I was 17. Okay. I was like, this is, this is horrendous. It, it, was, it was bad. Uh, that was, you know, uh, you know, you know. I think that's why today I play for the crowd. I don't, because, my worst fear is having an empty dance floor, God forbid, than sitting on that dance floor. That was, that's just a sight you just... Well, if anyone's sitting on the dance floor today, it's because they're yeah. doing business. Yeah. How do you continue just doing the same mm -hmm. thing over and over again? You're up until wee hours of the night. I mean, because you have a very different job than a 9 to 5 regular person. Mm -hmm. You have the 9 to 5 job on top of your late night job, which is entertaining the crazy people that love to dance and love right. music. So how do you balance out your real life with, and I'm gonna say like a local celebrity life because people are paying to see you. Right. 
you know what? I, I'm, I'm fortunate to have a lot of energy. <laughs> I, you know, I, got a, I got a high motor. I mean, I, I don't need much downtime. Four hours, I'm good to go. Um, so I, I live a pretty active lifestyle. So it's, I think that helps. I mean, if I was, you know, if my motor was slowing down, I think it, it, it would be hard. Because we do, we do a lot of stuff during the day. I mean, between studio stuff, dealing with the, the, the behind the scenes with the clubs, and then, of course, you know, the, people don't realize how much work goes into the showtime. Right. That three, four hour night, they don't realize how much work all week long goes into that. Uh, they just think that people magically appear, and we just get to play music to all these people. It doesn't work that way. Even, there's a lot of work to get them people to come out, to make the club run correctly, and different things. So, it's yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. But uh, right now, I mean, I'm, I'm not tired yet. <laughs> I got a little bit of a stiff neck from sleep last night, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty good. What's the motivation? Like, what drives you to just wake up in the morning and say, "All right, here we go, all over again." The people, I love just playing the music for them. I, I, I'm in the studio making the tracks because I'd love to see the reactions uh, to something that they may know, but that's different. I just, I, that's why, I, I, that, that little that three, four hour stint that we do, that's why I tell everybody, we may work 70 hours a week for, you know, six to eight hours. That, that's, where the, that's where the reward is, that those couple nights we're, we're DJing a week and playing for the people. That's what all the work goes into. So now that we've drawn in, and let's say for instance somebody has never had the opportunity to hear your stuff or whatnot, like where are we speaking of these residencies? Like where, and that means where he's playing. Where are you playing? Obviously, right now the summer is coming to an end. Um, where can people go out and be like, okay? Now, how does it AC? Um, every Friday we do cool. That continues on to yeah, where where we signed on for. Um, a portion of the fall. Okay. See how it goes. It's, um, yeah, yeah, so you're bringing the whole boat back in fall? Yeah, we'll be doing some stuff back in the whole boat. Do you have? I the fall, mm -hmm. uh, and then we start Icon, uh, which is the old uh, deco. Right, this is today's show. I'm Dina, and this is. DJ Nikki Sibilia. <laughs> oh. This is DJ Nikki Sibilia, and you've just been buzzed. <laughs>